Morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. I want to be doing another video in the series on dispensationalism. This isn't going to be a large video because it's going to be handling a subject that's relatively brief. It's going to be the Davidic Covenant. This is uh, video number 8 and I'm going to read from 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 11 to 16. And since that time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies... Also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee a house. And when the days be fulfilled, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. And he shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom for ever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men, and with the stripes of the children of men, but my mercy will not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established for ever before thee, and thy throne shall be established for ever. Now this is a covenant that the Lord entered into with David, but it's not a covenant that is... Um, some people think that this covenant is... Um, without um what's the word without responsibility in the, on, on the part of man it's an unconditional covenant i mean ultimately this covenant is a covenant with god and david and we know that solomon and the kings that followed him did not follow the lord and so this covenant and the kingdom that was established did not go on forever however david's greater son the lord jesus will establish a king in the name of David and with David, and that kingdom will abide forever. Now 1, Chron 1 Chronicles chapter 17 says, And since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, moreover I will subdue all thine enemies, for furthermore I, I tell thee that the Lord will build thee a house, and it shall come to pass that when the days be expired, thou shalt go forth to be with thy fathers, that I will raise up thy seed after thee, which shall be of thy sons, and will establish his kingdom, and he shall build me a house, and I will establish his throne forever, and I will be his father, and he shall be my son. And I will not take away mercy from him, take my mercy away from him, as I took it away from him that was before thee. I will settle him in my house and in my kingdom forever, and his throne shall be established forevermore. This is substantially the same thing as was mentioned in the previous passage. So what we have here then is a covenant with God and David as king of Israel. There are seven provisions of this covenant. Let's look at the first one. The first one is an eternal dynasty. Um, I don't think that David really understood that um, the kingdom would ever be taken away from them. Um, he never understood that the kings would be unfaithful to the Lord. He just believed that there probably would be a father-to-son, father-to-son kingdom that would go on forever. Of course, we know that that never happened. But this can have a prophetic tone as well, because we know that David will be raised again from the dead and will sit with Christ on his throne in Zion. And there he will have a dynasty. He will have a... Um, he will have an ongoing um, father-to-son dynasty in terms of kingship that will last forever. Um, the second point of the thing is that Solomon would be established on the throne. There was some debate as to who would be amongst David's sons, king of Israel. And of course, it was Solomon that took that place and he um, established the greatest kingdom that was ever known in Israel. Uh, also, we see that this to do with the temple, the, 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 the Lord David would reign from the temple and he would um, have a throne. This is number five, uh, where his throne would be forever. Of course, this was never fulfilled in David's lifetime, but it will be fulfilled in the Messianic kingdom and beyond. Um, the Lord also promised, uh, number uh, five, that God's loving kindness would not be taken away from David's son. And we can think of David's son as being Solomon. But we also remember that David, David's son is also spoken of as being of the Lord Jesus. And he 
um, will have a kingdom that will last forever and God's loving kindness will never be removed from Christ. Um, we also see that um, David's son, which was Solomon, would be a king forever. Now then, the idea that Solomon himself would be um, eternal in his mortal life was not going to be possible. So it's very likely that um, the prophecy here refers to Christ, who will be David's son, who will live forever. And so you can see how the two, the two concepts just slightly merge between each other. And lastly, the seventh provision is that Christ will be um, sitting on the throne of uh, David's house um, and of his kingdom forever. So this is, this is the ultimate purpose of God in relation to the kingly ministry of the Lord Jesus. He is the prophet, the priest and the king, but he's not prophet, priest and king at the same time. When he came in his ministry for three years, nearly three years, he was the prophet of the Lord that preached the coming kingdom. When he went to the cross and then when he ascended to heaven, he was the, pre he was the priest. He was both the offering, he was the altar, and he was the priest who offered it. And of course, Christ in his present ministry is the high priest of his people. But when he comes to earth in the future, he's coming not to be prophet or priest, he's coming to be king. And that is a kingdom that will last forever. So what I want to say is that in relation to all of these covenants, these are the covenants that God has made with mankind. And he's made these covenants with mankind. And, and every single human being is in these covenants one way or another. Not in the last covenant, um, not, not part of the Mosaic covenant necessarily, but certainly every human being in the world is in one of the covenants or other. So the idea that man has no relationship with God is actually quite incorrect. Man does have a relationship with God, but the relationship he has with men um, is a matter of law and promise. And God blesses those who are righteous and he condemns uh, those who are wicked. This is the way in which God deals with all human beings outside of grace. The Christian is in a different relationship altogether. He's not brought into any of these covenants on the basis of the blood of animals. No, the Christian is brought into a relationship in which he is in Christ and his standing in Christ is not a matter of law. His standing in Christ is a matter of grace and he has no law to fulfill. He has the Holy Spirit indwelling his heart and thereby he walks in the Spirit and is led of the Spirit and is empowered by the Spirit. So this is a spiritual life, nothing to do with any of the covenants whatsoever. Well, God bless you. I look forward to catching up with you next time we meet, and then we will be talking about the new covenant. God bless you, and bye for now.